Hello and welcome to another edition of Razorwire. My name's James Reese, and today, well, what can I say? The world is certainly going down a crazy, crazy route at the moment. You know, we've just come out of the pandemic. Uh, we're hitting World War Three, seemingly. Um, the economy is pretty much going down free fall. Inflation's going crazy. And cyber criminals are going nuts, um, spending a large amount of time cracking into places, ransomwareing places, government institutions, organisations, you name it, it's probably happening. The words uh, on the street uh, from various different media and commentators is that things are definitely heating up uh, from a cybercrime angle. Um, and I can honestly say it's getting pretty scary at the moment. Um, traditionally, cybercrime kind of, you know, it's always been there. It has been ramping up for a little while before all of this really kicked off. But <coughs> I think now a number of the cracking groups and or well-known hacking, cracking, ransomware groups, whatever you want to term them, malicious actors, um, They've now been given a bit of a cause uh, if they're in certain parts of the world uh, operating out of certain countries because of various different sanctions that have been laid on, on Russia, so on and so forth. So there's been some pretty active uh, malicious actors going after the various different companies who kind of pulled out of the region. Um, that includes airlines, it includes retail, it includes you know, what they perceive as enemy government bodies or, or government bodies that are unfriendly to them. We have to be a bit careful what we say here. Um, and yeah, you know, it's it's getting pretty bad. And I was having a number of conversations recently with a number of different different people that I know, vendors, other people in the industry. And, I, you know, we've been talking quite a while about a bit of a paradigm shift uh, when it came to what, uh, came out of the pandemic, you know, everybody was working from home, um, everybody was locked down, uh, companies had to very quickly adapt and change their solutions in order to be able to facilitate some kind of nominal working procedure where they could still kind of operate. And it took a little bit of time for them to get up to speed on it, you know, um, usage of things like Teams, Zoom, um, you know, video discussions, video meetings, uh, they went crazy. And to be honest, of all of vast majority of meetings these days still operate on that. You know, I definitely haven't been out getting much in the way of FaceTime like I used to with customers, potential customers, vendors, events, that kind of thing. Yeah, okay, you know, we're out of lockdown now. Um and we can go wherever we want, and the, the, the restrictions have been lifted somewhat. But that doesn't mean it's all gone back to how it was before. Um, sure, London's a busier place these days than it has been in the last two years. But a lot of the people that we're speaking to are saying, yeah, we've decided to kind of ditch the big plush office up in London uh, in more of a kind of remote working, you know, we've done the proof of concept, we were forced into the proof of concept, so now I think we're just going to adopt it. And we can save ourselves some serious money on, you know, the big plush office in Canary Wharf or um, in New York or wherever it may well be. So we've been talking about the shift of, of the way people work and access data, assets, uh, technological assets and interact. Um, but with this massive surge in cybercrime... Um, it's kind of put more of a emphasis these days on making sure you're secure and not only securing yourself and reviewing and refreshing your own security and your own defense in depth as an organization, but double checking that the third parties that you're using are doing the same thing. Um, we're living in very much a, a business space now where everything's kind of as a service. You know, you want an HR function not a problem you know the software will be as a service you know it'll be hosted on somebody else's infrastructure um somebody else's data center and so on and so forth 
you know, you can cut the costs of purchasing the big expensive product by having the cloud-based product. Um, and that goes for pretty much every aspect of what we do. You know, Office 365 has, has changed the way networks tend to work nowadays. Um, everything's been migrating and changing rather dramatically. One of the things that, that I don't feel has been addressed at the moment, um, and there was some, it's quite interesting that it hasn't, is the secure communications aspect. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm not talking about VPNs. I'm not talking about you know transmission of data across you know uh, public networks via the internet, wireless, wherever people are working. I'm talking about actually having conversations and in, you know encrypted communication uh, between team members. And it was it was a conversation yesterday I was having with uh, with a particular vendor, um, and it made me made me think in many respects. Um, if you are in a situation where you're predominantly remote working, um, you suspect a compromise of your network infrastructure, then rather than what you would originally do, which is go into a meeting room, sit down, have a conversation with various different people, come to a decision on what you want to do, and then go in and act that that plan, uh, you know, your incident response plan, you're more likely now to start basically calling people up via um, video link, you know, be it Teams, be it Zoom, whatever it may well be. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of that type of communication isn't actually encrypted. Um, there are products you can purchase which add that layer of encryption on top, but not everybody does that. So if it's not encrypted, then it could feasibly be monitored, it could be checked. You know, malicious actors could be looking for that kind of communication um, and actively high, you know, hijacking the, you know, the call as you're talking you know, listening in. It, it is a possibility, and I think it's something definitely going forward. Because if you're in the middle of a, an incident, the last thing that you want to do is to start having unencrypted communication with people um, about how you're going to feasibly fix it. Because then, well, there's a potential there for the malicious actors to listen in, find out what you are planning, and undertake activities to, to compromise what you're planning on doing or what you're trying to, to initiate and how you're going to try and recover. It's interesting. Which has led me back to what I've been saying for, for a little while now. We need to really look objectively at our def defense in depth as an organization and we need to re-review the way we do security. Many years ago, there was a group called the Jericho Forum um, I don't know if they're still around. Or probably, I, I haven't looked them up. I probably should do, actually. And they were very much a group of, of professionals, security professionals and IT professionals, who believed we should, we should put emphasis on securing of data, securing of communications, and worry less about things like firewalls. You know, the idea behind it, or I suppose the reason why they called it Jericho, is when the walls come down... Um, and they feasibly will. Uh, you need to make sure that, that your key assets are securely locked away uh, and securely protected from being stolen, being intercepted, whatever. And to be honest, at the time, uh, I was quite young in my career, security technology specifically was a lot less advanced as it is now. I thought, well, that's crazy, you know. You can't do away with firewalls. You've got to, got to concentrate on firewalls. But then that's the way IT was done back then. Now, with the transition to more kind of cloud-based services and as a, as a service functions, engaging more third parties, that kind of thing, what they're saying, or what they said at the time, is very true. But I don't think a lot of organizations are actually doing anything about it. You know, we do have a lot of customers um, and a lot of people approaching us to kind of review the security of the the environment that they have now because of the changes due to the pandemic and the, the large amount of remote workers. But what I'm seeing is a lot of people concentrating on the same old kind of security technologies, endpoint security, that kind of thing, and, and 
you know, rather than kind of refreshing that technological stack and refreshing their defense in depth models, um, they're kind of just trying to do the same thing that they used to do 10 years ago, which doesn't work. You know, times have moved on. The way that we consume our IT, the way that we, uh, you know, undertake business has significantly changed from what it was 10 years ago in much the same way that 10 years ago it had changed a hell of a lot since before the internet was a thing some you know 20 years before that you know where typewriters were still a thing you know we've been going through a significant amount of changes now for a good sort of 30 40 years and the internet has really kind of pushed the boundaries as to what we're able to do but people are still not spending what they need to spend on securing their environment. Um, they're not assigning budgets to security. Um, or if they are, the, the budgets are, are very, very low compared to what they probably need to be. Um, we need to completely review and refresh this. Um, I'm going to be doing a number of podcasts which is going to kind of touch upon this subject or even approach this subject uh, in a little bit more depth, but guys, you know, just look at what's going out in the world. We've got government agencies who've um, been attacked and the the malicious actors have been in their infrastructure apparently for a long time before it was detected. Um, we've got malware being dropped into networks all over the place you know we need to work on our detection protocols we need to work on endpoint security we need to refresh the technology that we use and update it we need to encrypt data not talking about native encryption from the operating system i'm talking about solid solid encryption which is has keys managed separated from the infrastructure and the the actual kind of digital accounts um, being used so we, we need to do a lot of this we need to refresh this defense in depth and I'm start you know I've just finished building a new defense in depth model that encompasses a lot of these technologies that will cater for what businesses need right here right now as we you know as we are today so if you want a copy of that please feel free to get in touch the the way to get in touch with us is is down in the description below um, if you've got any comments or anything that you want us to cover, then please feel free to also drop us a line, even if nothing more than tell us you like our content or you don't like our content or you disagree with something. You know, it's all about discourse. Security is not perfect and neither is any security person. So, you know, please feel free to interact. On the whole, stay vigilant, look after yourselves, and please, please, please start reviewing your product stack for your security, start reviewing your governance, start reviewing, re-reviewing business impact assessments, that kind of thing. The world is changing so quickly from a security standpoint that we can't afford to pay lip service to security anymore. And if you don't have a budget, time to start negotiating with the powers that be within your organization to get a good, solid security budget. It's just the way of things. So look after yourselves, guys. Feel free to get in contact and we'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.